Non-destructive editing is a critical part of any high-quality workflow. What is it, and how do you apply it? Let's find out. Adjustment layers are the most common examples of non-destructive editing in Photoshop. They give us the ability to modify and undo changes to the image even after it has been saved and closed. Let's open up a file. We'll go to our Chapter 5 folder and select the Adjustment Layers image. Now I'd like to direct your attention to the bottom right portion of the screen where you find our layers panel and for the very first time we have a series of adjustment layers. We've got a curves adjustment layer, photo filter, and hue saturation. Now we've worked with each of these three tools before. The difference this time is that they've been applied as adjustment layers. Well what's so great about adjustment layers? The answer, a lot. If I move over here to the layers panel I can turn the visibility of each of these adjustment layers on and off independently. If I click on this eye icon, I'm temporarily disabling the effect of this adjustment layer. I'm not throwing anything away, I'm not tossing them out, I'm simply temporarily hiding their effect. So with all three of these turned off, you can see how the image looked before I started making any edits. I'm going to turn these three back on. Another great feature of adjustment layers is that at any point after they've been created, you can modify them. If I double click anywhere in this curves adjustment layer, we open up an adjustments panel and you see our curves interface that looks remarkably similar to curves that we've used in previous lessons and the behavior is identical. You can see how I've modified the shape of the curve. The highlights have opened up a little bit and I've brought the shadows down just a hair, but there's nothing preventing me from going up, clicking on the on image adjustment tool, clicking and dragging somewhere in the image and further modifying that effect. Another great thing that you can do with adjustment layers is change their overall strength or opacity. If I move back to the layers panel, with the Curves Adjustment layer selected, it's highlighted in blue, I'm going to click on the word Opacity. Right now it's at 100% or full strength. If I type in a lower value, 30% in this case, you can see how much that reduces the overall strength of the adjustment layer. I'm going to set this opacity back to 100%. I think it works fairly well with this image. If you find yourself completely unhappy with the result of an adjustment layer, you can simply get rid of it, delete it. If I go back down to our curves adjustment layer and right click on the PC, control click on the Mac, I can scroll down and select delete layer. Now that layer is gone as if it never existed. I'd like to point out that in the layers panel right now you're just seeing small generic adjustment layer icons, these little black and white cookie shapes. If we go to the flyout menu in layers and scroll down to panel options, we can choose a larger thumbnail size. I'll choose one in the middle, we'll hit OK, and now we can see the individual icons for our adjustment layers. It's up to you whether you'd like to work with these small generic icons or larger ones. For our recording purposes, I'm going to go back into panel options and reset this for our smaller thumbnail size. But feel free to use whichever one you prefer. In our next lesson, we're going to continue working on this image. But for right now, I'd like for you to close this file without saving it, then reopen it so we can begin the next lesson with the image back in its original state. We're beginning this lesson with our adjustment layers file open. If yours is not on screen, you can find it in the Chapter 5 folder inside the Project Files folder. You may have noticed that in our layers panel to the right of the eye icon, we actually have three separate icons. On the left is our adjustment layer icon. On the right is what's called the layer mask icon. And in between these two is a chain link. How do these elements work together? To find out, we're going to create a brand new adjustment layer. There are many ways to do this in Photoshop. Perhaps the easiest is to move to the adjustments panel and you can see 15 icons along three rows, each representing a separate type of adjustment. If you hover the mouse over an icon, its name shows up at the top of the panel. That saves you a lot of work from having to decipher what these icons mean. We're going to start with the hue saturation layer. It's in the second row and the second icon. By clicking, notice that we have automatically created an adjustment layer. It's towards the bottom of our layers panel and it's named hue saturation 2. I'm going to move the saturation slider fairly far to the left and desaturate this image. 
Now, big deal, you're saying, we could have done this without an adjustment layer. But what if we wanted this desaturation effect to be applied not to the entire image, but just to a portion of the image? Well, now we need to really take a look at layer masks. In our layers panel, we can see to the left of Hue Saturation 2 is a white layer mask icon. The thing you need to remember about layer masks is that white reveals and black conceals. Well, what's being concealed or revealed? It's our adjustment layer here on the left. Our adjustment layer is currently set to desaturate the image at a value of minus 65. That adjustment effect is linked via this chain link icon to a white layer mask because the layer mask is white over the entire frame of the image that desaturation effect is being applied to the entire image. Watch what happens if I change the color of that layer mask. With hue saturation 2 highlighted in blue and make sure you can see these four brackets around the layer mask icon it's very important if you do not see it simply click on the layer mask icon and I'm going to go up to the edit menu edit and then fill and under contents I'm going to select use black and hit OK now you can see that our layer mask has changed from all white to completely black watch what happens if I toggle the visibility of this adjustment layer on and off you can see that the image does not change at all why is that well we still have a desaturation effect in our adjustment layer it is linked to a layer mask, but this time the layer mask is completely black. And black blocks out the effect of that adjustment. It's as if it doesn't even exist. On its own, this might not seem very helpful, but what I would like to do in this image is desaturate part of the clouds. There's an area of these foreground clouds where the blue is really bothering me, and I'd really like to take the color out of that area while leaving the color throughout the rest of the image. We can accomplish that by painting on the mask. So what I'm going to do is go and select the brush tool in the toolbar. The shortcut for the brush tool is B. I'm going to go up to the options bar, click and make sure that my hardness is set to 0%. This gives us a nice feathered edge on the brush. At the bottom of the tools panel, I want to go to my foreground and background colors. And I want my foreground color to be white. Right now, white is set to my background color. I'm simply going to click on this double bent arrow, and now that white chip is on top of the black one. That means we are going to be painting with white. If you're seeing another color in here altogether, I want you to move down and click on this set default icon to automatically set you to a white foreground and a black background. As we paint with white over this black mask, watch what happens. As soon as I start painting, you can see the areas over which I brush are now being desaturated. I'll hit this little portion in the top of the clouds, and that looks pretty good. Now, notice what's happened in our layers panel. The hue saturation layer mask has been updated. It's no longer a completely black mask. We've got areas of white. Those represent the brush strokes that we just made. Let's take a closer look at what's just happened. If I move over to the channels panel, at the bottom we have a hue saturation 2 mask. This mask is created automatically every time we select an adjustment layer mask. And if I turn on the visibility icon here, we can see that the bulk of the image is covered with a red overlay. That represents the black area of the mask. Where I have painted, you can see the actual image color showing through. So this represents the brush strokes that we've made to create this adjustment on the mask. I'm going to toggle this preview off, go back to the layers panel, and let's review what we've just done. We created a hue saturation layer, desaturated the entire image, then set our layer mask to black, blocking out the effect of that desaturation. We then selected a brush tool, set our foreground color to white, and painted with white over the mask. The areas over which we painted in white are now allowing the desaturation effect to show through. So it's a great way to apply localized or selective adjustments where you want to alter one part of the image without touching other parts of the image. Now I did a fairly good job of painting on here if I do say so myself, but suppose instead of painting just over the clouds, I had accidentally 
painted over in this sky area and desaturated some parts of the image that I didn't mean to. Well, all is not lost. Painting with white on a black mask is very easy to reverse. We simply go down to our tool panel, switch our foreground color to black, and just paint over that area again. We are painting black over that white area of the mask that was inadvertently painted. So you can get an idea of the power and flexibility that you have when you combine adjustment layers with layer masks. We've just seen how to paint on a mask, but there's another way of hiding and revealing the adjustment layer by using the gradient tool. Let's open a file in our chapter 5 folder. We're going to select the file titled gradient. Notice in our layers panel we have a curves adjustment layer, but the visibility is toggled off right now, so we're looking at the image in its original state. As it stands, the sky in here is pretty good, but the foreground is a little dark and heavy. Let's turn on this curves adjustment and see what change has been made. Here I've made a curve that has opened up the foreground nicely, but the sky is too bright and washed out. We're going to fix that with the gradient tool, but two things we need to verify. In your tools panel at the bottom, you need to make sure that your foreground color is set to white and your background color is set to black. If these colors are reversed, simply go to this double bent arrow and click. That will reverse the colors. If you're seeing another color in here altogether, I want you to move down and click on this set default icon to automatically set you to a white foreground and a black background. Let's go and choose the gradient tool. It's located in the tools panel and the keyboard shortcut is the letter G. The last thing we need to verify is up in the options bar. Here we've got a gradient picker that lets us set the mode. I'm going to click and we want to make sure that we have the very first option selected. This is our foreground to background gradient. In this case, our foreground is white and our background is black. That's what we want to be painting with. So I'm going to click that to select it. And just to the right of this gradient, I want you to make sure that this very first option is highlighted in terms of the type of gradient. Now we're ready to get started. The gradient tool works by drawing a gradient from, in this case, white to black. So where we start drawing with the gradient is going to set white and where we release the mouse is going to set black. In this image what I would like to do is have the foreground area of the image remain white on the layer mask. So I'm going to start my gradient here at the base of this tree. I'm going to click and drag up and I'm going to hold the shift key while I drag to constrain what I'm drawing to a straight line. I'm going to stop my mouse at about the top of this mountain range. The point at which I release the mouse is going to tell Photoshop to take the image area above here and set that layer mask to black. So right now the layer mask is going to be black above this mountain ridge and it is going to be white below the base of this tree. The area in between where I have drawn this line will be filled in by a smooth seamless gradient. I'm going to release the mouse taking care to hold the shift key until I let go of the mouse. And now look at what we've done. Our sky has gone back to that nice rich sky while our foreground has opened up nicely. So you can use the gradient tool to move seamlessly between white areas of the mask and black areas of the mask. I'd like to point out that although you can experiment and draw as many gradients as you like, each new gradient will replace the previous one. So on a single layer mask, you are limited to one gradient at a time. A thorough discussion of blending modes could easily take up an entire training series. Here, we'll look at a quick and easy way to build up image contrast using blending modes. First step, as always, is to open an image. We'll go to our Chapter 5 folder, and we'll open the image titled Blend. Simply put, Blending modes perform math on your image using the RGB values of two sets of pixels. So in order for blending modes to work, you have to have at least two items in your layers panel. We're going to add an adjustment layer above our background layer. And here's the trick. It really doesn't matter which one we use because we're not going to make any adjustments to the layer. We're simply going to use an empty adjustment layer as a conduit for invoking a blending mode. So let's go to our adjustment panel and we'll just choose brightness contrast. I'm going to go to the layers panel and at the very top we have our blending modes menu. Now there's a lot of options in here but let's break it down a little bit. This second group starting with darken 
is our darkening group. This is what you choose if you want to make an image darker. This is followed by the lightening group of blending modes and they, of course, lighten an image. This third group, beginning with overlay, is our contrast group. And this is what we use to adjust the contrast in the image by brightening some pixels and darkening other pixels. We're going to choose overlay. Now you can see a huge difference in the image, much more contrasty. That's a little bit harsh here, so let's go and choose soft light, a much gentler approach. It's still a little too heavy in the water though, but we can adjust the opacity of the blending mode. I'm going to click on the word opacity, we're set at 100%, I'm going to reduce that to 50%. A much more realistic effect. Instead of adding contrast to the image, if we wanted to darken it, we would simply choose the multiply blending mode. If we wanted to lighten the image, we would choose screen. And of course, as you move between different blending modes, you can adjust the opacity as needed. So far, it may seem that adjustment layers and layer masks have no downsides. But before you tack on 15 layers to an image, you should be aware that layers and masks significantly increase file size. Here's a way to get similar results without the bloated file size. The history brush, in conjunction with snapshots, allows us to make selective changes to an image. Let's go to our Chapter 5 folder and open up the file titled History. Now what we need to do is show the History panel. We'll go to Window and simply select History. Right now it's grouped with MiniBridge, which we'll talk about in an upcoming chapter. So for now, let's just get rid of it. I'm going to expand the history panel and I'm going to dock it right beneath our adjustments panel. The history panel keeps track of the changes you make to an image allowing you to quickly revert to an earlier image state. Photoshop by default limits you to 20 history states at any given time. You can increase this number in preferences but adding more history states uses up more memory. Snapshots allow you to create temporary copies of an image state that will reside at the top of the history panel even if its corresponding history state has been recycled. In this image I'm going to change the color of two of the outfits. To do that I'm going to go to the image menu, adjustments, and select hue saturation. Here I'll take the hue and I'll drag it over to the right to turn this outfit into a nice light purple. I'll hit OK. Now what I want to do is add a snapshot. You'll notice that at the very top of the history panel we've already got one snapshot that simply has the name of the image file. By default Photoshop adds an initial snapshot every time you open an image. We can add a snapshot by clicking on this camera icon at the bottom. I'm going to hold down the Option key on the Mac, Alt key on the PC to allow me to name the snapshot while I'm adding it. I'll call this one purple. Now I'm going to revert back to our original image state by clicking this initial snapshot. I'm going to select the hue saturation tool again, image, adjustments, hue saturation. And now I'm going to change that outfit to a nice bright green. We'll hit OK. I'm going to make another snapshot Holding down the Option key on the Mac, Alt key on the PC, I'm going to name this one Green. Now in the Tool panel, I'm going to select the History brush. That's located directly beneath the regular brush tool. You can see it's a brush icon with a curved arrow. I'm going to go up to the Options bar and make sure that my hardness is set to zero. I want a nice soft feathering for this brush. And in our history panel, we have three snapshots. I'm going to revert back to our initial snapshot, and I'm going to set the source of the history brush to our second snapshot titled purple. I'll set the source simply by clicking in this box. Now I'm going to paint on the image. I'll make my brush a little bit larger. And I am painting from the snapshot. So you'll see that this outfit is now becoming purple. It's picking up the state of the image document from the point at which I created that snapshot. I'm 
There we go. I'll just get a little bit on the upper left shoulder. And that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to set the source of my history brush to the green snapshot. And this will allow me to paint on the second outfit a completely different color. Now you can see I had a little bit of spill over here on this mannequin at the far left. To get rid of that, I'm going to set the source from my history brush back to our initial snapshot. And I'm simply going to paint that back out. That's all there is to it. Let's go back to our initial image by clicking on the initial snapshot. And compare that with our final result by clicking on our final history state. I should point out that when you save and close this file, both your history states and your snapshots will be completely wiped out. So these features only work within a given work session.